I'm Melissa Chartrand. I'm here with Melissa Avarinos in her really cool, creative, colorful studio. I am so happy to be here. It's like just such a happy place. My question for you is, did you grow up and when people gave you clothes and things, you immediately just cut them all up and made other things? <laughs> I, did, I did alter clothes when I was growing up. My mom uh, used to sew, and so there was always fabric and things like that around, and I was always getting into mischief. All right. Well, we're going to talk about that. You, it's not just one thing that you do. So I, you're an artist of many, many different mediums mm -hmm. and talents, certainly. <laughs> um, and one of the first things that you had me at, Melissa, was a lover of all things pie, mm -hmm. strawberry rhubarb pie. I, I was reading. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading on your blog, and we'll tell our viewers about that later. But yeah. you had me at that. Yeah. On top <laughs> of everything else, from painting and long, long arm quilting, mm -hmm. and these cool quilts behind us that are portraits. And and on and on and on. So let's start from the beginning. Okay. How where you grew up and and how it all began. Okay. Uh, I grew up in Centerville, and I uh, grew up in a like a big old farmhouse and uh, not a whole lot of supervision. So I was pretty much uh, you know on my own doing entertaining myself either playing in the yard or um, drawing on the walls or melting <laughs> crayons on the back of the wood stove or um, drawing painting whatever I could get my hands into. And then from there, and you obviously your mom had no problem with that whatsoever. <laughs> well, it was strongly <laughs> encouraged. I mean, do you come from a family of having been around that, or this just you just embraced it? I didn't really grow up uh, around art, um, but I think everybody in my family is artistic and creative. Um, but it was more um, it was my personal outlet. It was my comfort. Sure. I would spend a lot of time in my room painting from seventh grade on, drawing, painting. Um, when other people were out doing normal seventh grader stuff, I was you know in my room listening to music, painting or crafting. And um, so it was. It's always been my. Um, my the thing that saves me when I'm if I'm sad I've struggled a lot with depression and anxiety and it's always been the thing that I go to to get out how I feel or to comfort myself or to kind of um, it's like my companion sure and what a wonderful way of, of expressing that and getting out all those emotions tell me about um, the process so do you when you're painting are you just painting or do you go from painting to quilting to that to this or is there a crossover between what your the mediums you work in yeah I feel like it's really seamless like I'll I will literally be in my painting room one one minute and you know be spending a few hours painting and I'll get up and then I'll work on a quilt and it's just back and forth and even uh, the way that I approached the self-portrait quilt is it, I really felt like I was just painting with the fabric and um, using the, sa the, same, the same things that I would do to make a self-portrait look more like me if it were paint is what I did with fabric. It's just like a big collage. So it's really, it's to me, the quilting, although it's you know more crafty and people don't necessarily think of it as um, an, a form of expression or an art form, it really is or can be Absolutely. that. And, um, and I just look at it as another medium. It's like fabric collage. And it's, it, to me, everything is a, it's, I can make something with anything. Sure. Um, this long arm quilting, and we, you have this beautiful machine <laughs> right here. Tell me a little bit about that and what exactly that means. Okay. Uh, long arm quilting is, let's say that you made a quilt top, like you went to a class and you made a quilt top, and then you don't know what to do with that top. You want it to make it into a full quilt with the backing and the batting, which is the soft, fluffy stuff in the middle that makes it warm, and the edge, the binding. Um, so you could sew that together yourself on your domestic machine, but most people don't do that. Most people will send that out to a long arm quilter. And what I do is I roll it on my giant machine, and um, I sew together the backing and the batting and the top, and I sew, I stitch the pretty patterns on it, and I love it because it's really just like drawing. It is drawing with just thread and a big machine. Um, so that's what long arm quilting is. And um, you can do that traditionally, um, like heirloom type quilting that looks very traditional and old fashioned, which I do not do. Um, or you can do more like free form modern sure. stuff. Um, I also do some things where I just draw with it, like my own drawings. Like I've done some little face you know, faces. I'm not even sewing together parts of a quilt. I'm just sewing on fabric and just sewing little faces and just I'll, I'll take anything and make a face out of it. <laughs> and and I, to me, that is just fascinating that you can look at some of these pieces, for example, what we're sitting with, and is that pretty much the process? You can just look and pull and place and, and the face pops out to you. Pretty much, yeah. I don't plan anything, Pretty when I, whether I'm quilting 
long arm quilting or whether I'm making my own quilts like the applique or um, the pieced face quilt that I had in the gallery show or whether I'm painting, I don't plan things out. I just, it's all intuitive and I just kind of let it happen and I don't get too precious about it and too fussy. If I start to, if I start to worry too much about how it's going to come out, it's not fun for me anymore. And the right. whole point, for me, the point is to have fun. It's not about the end product. I want the end product to look good, but it will only look good to me if I've had fun doing it. And exactly. if I, you know, if I start to stress out too much about it, it's just not fun anymore and there's no point. No, and then that's, as you say, reflective in the work. Yes. Um, with the painting, same thing. You just take an approach, and I know that you're inspired. You mentioned that um, in your blog that you like music. Mm -hmm. And so is that what you kind of kick the music on and, and just go from there? Yep, I pretty much always have music on. Um, I, I love a whole bunch of different kinds of music. I tend to love sad songs but I also love <laughs> <laughs> I love um you know like bluegrass and you know just all all kinds of stuff but I almost always have music on in the studio and let's talk about the work itself as far as being able to purchase because certainly you love to do it because it's fun and it's expression for you mm -hmm. but we also like to make a living mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, and so how do you do that with everything here like you said if I had a quilt that I wanted to get in touch with mm -hmm. you or do you even do custom orders where I said here I'd love you to make a portrait for me or I want one of your paintings mm -hmm. tell me <laughs> tell me about that and how it is okay. making your living as an artist okay <laughs> um, making a living as an artist can be challenging, and I, I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily 100% there, but I am chipping away at it. Um, I absolutely do long arming for customers, so people could just email me um, about that. Um, I haven't had requests to do like a custom applique, but I probably would. And I don't make qu quilts. Like if you said, I want you to make me a quilt from start to finish, I don't do that because that, it's not that fun for me. Right, you know? right. Um, but I would probably do something more um, like an applique, like a, a portrait of you sure. know, something. Um, and I definitely take requests for paintings. Um, I've done a bunch of custom paintings of like I do the, um, sandy neck paintings and things like that that are done in a way that isn't like a typical Cape Cod art kind of way that's... Um, uh, has more of a mood to it, I think. Sure, sure. And you mentioned, I think I love your use of social media, so let, we can talk about mm -hmm. your blog and talk about how you just mentioned that you put them up on Instagram. And I did. I, I, what an amazing way to sell work <laughs> these days. It, is. it really is uh, remarkable. Well, I love Instagram. I'm always, um, I used to use Twitter a lot, but I've really fallen away from it since I was able to join Instagram because I'm so visual. It just right. makes more sense. Um, so I'm always, you know, I post several times a day and I'm always posting what I'm working on. And in fact, that's how the uh, portrait quilts came about is because I, w I couldn't sleep one night and I just started messing around on my design wall. And I posted this little, I just threw some scraps on the wall in, in like a rough self-portrait and it was like, you know, I, I was just entertaining myself because I couldn't <laughs> sleep, but I posted like, hey, everybody, I can't sleep. Look what I made. And um, and people were really um, encouraging. And I was like, oh, well, I can just, you know, I can take this further. So I just kept going with it. And, and that's where um, the quilts really came from because I wouldn't have seen it through because I, it's, the encouragement and the support that I got really helped me to want to see that through. And, um, and so I love Instagram for that reason, um, among many. And then, and it's the same as with the paintings, I'll, you know, if I spend five hours paintings, a painting, I'll probably take three or four photographs of what I'm working on and post them. And people started saying, you know, are you selling these? And I was like, oh, maybe I will. I tend to be a, a kind of a slacker about shipping. So I don't really have things online all the time because then right. I'd have to find them if somebody <laughs> wanted to buy them. But if I know it's like a limited time, like I'm only offering these today. If you want one, you can buy one. Um, and then I'll ship, you know, this week. Um, so on Instagram, you know, so every now and then I'll, I'll list some paintings for sale. Wow, that's technology. <laughs> that's in work. Um, and let's talk about your blog. You're so funny and so clever. I love just looking at it. So let's tell our viewers a little about what you do. Okay, it's yummygoods.com. And um, I've been blogging since about 2007. And I love it. I'm really open. I'm very, um, it's like as if we were friends and I'm just talking to you on my blog. I try to be really honest. I'm very um, upfront about the struggles I've had with anxiety and depression and, and real things that go on in my life and in relation to that. I talk about my artistic process and show pictures of what I'm working on. And um, I also love thrifting and I'll often post pics of like scores that I found while I was out thrifting and it's just a fun, it's just another medium to express sure. myself and, and I really feel like 
my blog readers are uh, my friends who I just haven't met yet. And so right. if I meet somebody who reads my blog, I feel like we're friends already. Because right. if you like my blog, then you know me, basically. Sure. I think that's beautiful. And beautiful that you're willing to share. And I'm sure, especially as you say, both, both ends of it, of the creative end and the struggles and that you are influencing others and encouraging them and guiding them. And I'm sure you've, you've heard back from some that are, that, ask more questions and you've helped in many ways. Yes, I, I that's one of the things that I love about social media and blogging is any time that I've talked about any of my struggles, I always get, you know, a, at least like five emails or messages back, you know, people telling me about their struggles and it's good to see somebody who, you know, they think of as successful, who is also, you know, managing the same things. And, um, and I think there's a, a stigma about talking about it and people will often kind of sweep it under the rug or um, I just feel like we need to talk about depression and anxiety. And, and understand it. I think education is key. People yeah. have an image or a perception of what that really means. Yeah. So that's um, that's wonderful that you're willing to share that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also noticed that you do, uh, as much as you do the work, you share do-it-yourself projects, too, and are I willing do. to share those those tricks and trades. Yep. Well, I write craft books, so I, I write and illustrate my own craft books that are uh, published through Adams Media, and they have a, a sister website called craftdaily.com, and I just filmed um, two series of videos for them. That's very exciting. <laughs> it is, it is. So those will be on um, crafting with uh, mason jars, and the other one is on crafting with wine corks, which coincide with my two books. Yeah. Like I said, I bet you look at absolutely everything. <laughs> And not the same way. It's like, oh, I can turn this <laughs> trash can right. into this amazing lamp or Much something. Much to my husband's dismay, I, I'm a kind of a pack rat in that way. Because I'm like, oh, I could do something with that. And he's like, but are you going to? And sometimes I actually do. Right, so. right. Um, that leads me to, I know I know your quilts, beautiful quilts were on display at Couture Center for the Arts mm -hmm. a while back. Do you do other exhibits um, or plan to do that in the future? I would love to. I um, The quilts, I would love to, to see, you know, go further. That one that was in the show was my first one of that style. I just, I challenged myself to do a portrait quilt that was pieced, um, that is sewn together um, with seams rather than applique, which is kind of applied to the top of the fabric. So um, that was a real challenge for me. And, and it was my first try and I finished it within a day before wow. it was being hung. <laughs> so, so I'd love to just t push sure. that further and see what else I can do. I'm going to submit it to a, a a modern quilting um, show called QuiltCon and, you know, see how that does, see if there's um, any interest in it. And I just want to keep going with it. And I would love to, you know, continue to show my paintings. I've shown that at different galleries. I have some things in Little Beach Gallery in Hyannis and at Supple Apothecary in Orleans. Um, I would love to find a gallery out in Wellfleet or P-Town and um, just keep showing the work because I, I do my own kind of fun um, uh, whatever I like to do, more personal work, but I also do kind of Cape Cod themed things that are done in, like I said before, like not right. a not a super Cape Coddy style, but more of um, like bold and colorful and uh, a lot of texture and um, mood and kind of a lot of heart. That's, I, I love it. Let's let our viewers know where they can, again, let's give them okay. the website and blog and okay. find it's, out more about you. It's yummygoods.com and my name's Melissa Averino, so you can email me at melissa at yummygoods.com. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, but I don't really go there very much. Right. Well, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Melissa, thank, thank you for letting me come <laughs> in and into your role for a little bit. It's been so nice meeting you. Thank you for coming. Thanks so much. For Melissa Averino, I'm Melissa Chartrand, wishing you a colorful day.